Welcome back. Let's talk to Mike Ingram. He's a strategist at BGC Partners. Morning to you, Mike. It's like the good old days. It is. You. Right, let's talk about the dollar index. Um, yep. In this segment, we've got two slides. Um, the headline, Fast Money Flees the US Dollar. Give me some bullet points on this fascinating chart. Well, we can all see this um, complete rollover that we've seen on the dollar index this year. Uh, we saw a major surge uh, in the dollar post-Trump uh, election in November. That very quickly rolled over in January, and it's only really headed in one direction. And what I've done is I've just noting here the relationship between that dollar index and so-called fast money positions, how hedge funds are positioned in and around in the dollar. And if you look at where they are right now, they're, they're at the, the, the most short on the dollar yep. they've been in four and a half years. Right. Um, so that's a crowded trade, right? Yeah, you might say that they're, they're just waiting to get hosed, and it'd be quite interesting to see, um, you know, if the Fed minutes, which we're going to say li later on today, um, manages to, um, you know, lift a few of people out of, out of those positions, because there are many people now saying that they think maybe that's uh, looking a, a touch overdone. Understood. Let's go on to the second slide. A risk disconnect. What is this telling the yeah. audience? Okay, so um, blue line is, is the uh, Merrill Lynch so-called move index, and that's the um, implied um, volatility on the US, uh, US Treasury curve. Okay. So basically, it's, it's uh, interest rate risk. You know, um, you know, we think we know what the Fed's going to do. Some of it will be priced in the market, but how much uncertainty, how much volatility is, is implied plus or minus around that central scenario. And as you can see, like most uh, risk measures out there, whether it's the VIX, whether it's V2X and Eurostox, you know, that's right down on the floor. That blue right. line is right down on the floor. Now, there's, there's another body, and they've been doing this for years. I've got to, over a 20-year history, haven't I? So, um, so uh, 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 Bloom, Baker and Davis, they do this survey um, called a policy uncertainty index. They review these US newspapers. They see how many times, um, you know, words associated with policy uncertainty crop up. And they crunch the numbers and they process them. And then they create this index. And they, as I said, they've been doing this. I've, I've run this from, from 1994. Now, historically, as you might expect, there was a reasonably tight correlation between that implied volatility on that, on that, on that US Treasury curve and the perception of policy uncertainty out there. Now, post-crisis, post-2008, that's broken down to some extent. And you can imagine, of course, you know, a few years ago, we were talking about TARP, we were talking about QE out yep. of the US, all, all sorts of operation twists, all sorts of things. Now, that had shown some signs of reconnecting or recoupling uh, a year or two ago. Now it's starting to blow out again because, of course, there is some uncertainty. Again, maybe the Fed minutes will shed some light on this as to, you know, the when the when at least of balance sheet reduction there's there's blatantly a complete disbelief about what the fed's going to do next year fed says three or implying three rate rate hikes market saying one and also which added that we're not just talking about monetary policy uncertainty now we're talking about broader policy uncertainty coming from capitol hill what's going on with the trump administration what's going with, with um, fiscal policy a lot of the um policies which are being being priced very favorably into risk assets in the u.s uh, the, at the end of last year, now fading, are they going to get tax cuts through? Is there going to be a fiscal cliff you know, in September? So as I said, there's, there seems to be a bit of a disconnect between what the market is pricing in and what is probably going on right now. Brilliant analysis, Mike. Thank you very much indeed.